Kawhi to watch Leonard the Lakers play. play. <laughs> the action for the first time in 493 days. You know when you have parts there. of your job that you don't like? And That's me is, every time I'm watching the Lakers. Well, good thing we're not going to talk to you about this. And we're going to start with Zach because I know there are things that stood out to you yeah, about John Wall. This guy also came back, and this is what John Wall brings to the table. This is just 30 seconds of John Wall being also a mid-range jumper. That's cool. Hey, back on defense. Here come the Lakers. They probably missed or something. Boom. <laughs> we are corner three. This is the north-south gear the Clippers do not have. This is what they need from John Wall. Another miss. Blah. And here comes John Wall. <laughs> push, push, push. Corner three. Love this it. is a gear they don't have. And by the way, welcome back, John Wall. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. So that was John Wall. We'll go ahead to the second quarter here, Richard, because Kawhi Leonard, this is when we saw him for the first time. He was the 11th guy to play for the Clippers. Well, And look, you understand that this is a tactical thing. And look, when I, we're talking about Tyron Lou, he's going to do what is best for his team tactically. They decided to sit him down to start the game so he could be available late in the game. And look, I guarantee you they were glad they had him. Well, then you can see Darvin Ham's message there. Contest without fouling. The internet did what the internet does with that. Let's go ahead to the third <laughs> quarter here. The clip's up six at this point, Janae. Look, Kawhi Leonard, this is exactly why you're excited. No matter whether he st comes off the bench or starts, this is what he does. 14 points in 21 minutes. You can imagine later in the season, he's going to be great and in peak form. But watch. Speaking Ooh. of peak form, LeBron James reminded everybody who he is, what he does. Yeah, Father Time don't want none of that action. Oh, we've seen Father Time watch lately. Yeah, that. Yeah, I had to watch it. that commercial on the Jumbotron Did in Crypto.com oh, last night. I hear your voice it. first, and it just throws me every time. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, Lonnie Look, Walker with the bounce. The Lakers competed. They yes. did, and that's yes. one thing you can ask. They played better defensively, but at the end of the day, Zubats, Leonard, PG, they showed up and showed out. Well, under a minute left to play here. Let's go ahead to this. The Clippers at four. Kawhi. Ooh, Just funny shot. buries the mid-range jumper. The Clippers, they go on to win 103-97. I caught up with Paul George afterwards. It felt great. It felt great. He got his feet wet. It was nice. He came in, knocked his first couple shots down. Uh, he won't admit it, but I'm sure it was a little nerves in there. Um, but it was great. He had a great showing. It was fun to be out there with him. You know, credit to him. He could have easily started. He did it for the team. He did it for himself to get ready. Um, you know, just, just a selfless player. We love having him back. He looked good again tonight. Um, I can't wait to get this thing going. Start another one on Saturday. You got to gradually um, play minutes in order to get the ACL strong. Um, once you start playing 38 minutes first game, you could, it could easily weaken up. But, you know, I'm listening to the doctors with that. And uh, like I said, it's a long season. Um, we want to get in the playoffs and want me to play in the playoffs. Um, you know, these first weeks, uh, you know, it's not so important, but they are. But like I said, we got players that can fill that role for me. Now welcoming in senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj, Kawhi came off the bench for the first time since 2013, just alluded to not playing in back-to-backs to start the year. So what is the plan for him moving forward here? Hey, Malika, the, the plan is to see how he responds to the increased workload, certainly how uh, the knee responds uh, to uh, having not played for 15 months. And so certainly the Clippers have so much depth. That they're, they've, they've got two of everything, right? They're like Noah's Ark. And so they're, they're a team that can withstand, uh, you know, not playing significant minutes with Kawhi Leonard early. You know, they want him to be able to have him at the end of games. And they also don't want him to have long stretches where he sits. Uh, so I think for... Uh, the Clippers, they're uniquely able to get through the regular season, uh, kind of modifying Kawhi Leonard's minutes as they go, knowing that this is a team uh, whose ultimate goal is winning a championship and having him uh, at an optimum level by the end of the year. All right, so if the Clippers are Noah's Ark, then on the other side, the Lakers, they are trying to stop just the flood of noise that is coming in to make moves. But, Woj, what are the stakes here for the Lakers, and how does that impact their strategy up to this point? Malika, the stakes are making a move or moves when they ultimately do that give them a chance in future years to win a title while LeBron James is still uh, playing at an all NBA level and, and certainly Anthony Davis is uh, part in it. But the, the deals that were there this summer are essentially what would be there right now. And those are the two pick deals, which is really the only assets the Lakers have. They're 27, 29 first round picks. The Indiana deals they talked about the Utah trades, 
And I think LA looked at those deals and said, yes, we would be better, but we wouldn't be good enough and they wouldn't set us up uh, to be a championship level team. And so I think for the Lakers, you know, you, you know, they're gonna certainly talk to teams, but there's a level of desperation teams know they have. No one uh, is gonna do a deal with LA for anything, um, but uh, asking for a lot right now, you're the Lakers, you really have to wait 20 games, mm. uh, see what teams may start to pivot, uh, and look at what might be out there for deals that aren't the two-pick deals. Maybe it's a one-pick deal. Maybe that's somebody who's looking to get money off and trades uh, somebody with more money left on their contract for Westbrook's expiring deal. Uh, or things start to present themselves, especially in a year mm. where you know there's going to be tanking for Victor Wembayana, and all of a sudden the team has an injury, a team decides instead of chasing the play-in, let's get in the lottery. And I think for the Lakers, you know, they've got to be patient so that they don't compound the mistake they made, which was trading all of their assets mm. for Russell Westbrook. Um, three players that they could have packaged in other ways or kept, uh, been able to kept Alex Caruso by not taking on Westbrook's deal and trading a pick. Uh, to not compound that with another deal that they see as short-sighted. And remember, Rob Palenka got a contract extension. Mm. LeBron James is on an extension. Yep. Palenka does not have to go out and try to do a deal that saves him in the short term. And I think that's part of ownership's thinking is, if we're going to commit to Rob Palenka in the job, he helped us win a championship uh, in 2000 in the bubble. We're going to allow him to reshape this roster. Um, let's not do a deal here that when people are just clamoring for it, that ultimately, again, is short-sighted and doesn't get them ultimately toward being able to really try to reshape the roster. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.